Hello and welcome to Path Made Easy. Today's example is an acinic cell carcinoma occurring in the parotid gland. So much of this slide is composed of tumour, which is this purple uh, lesion, and we have some normal uh, parotid tissue on the edges. So just to show you, we have some nice serous acini, some striated ducts and some adipose tissue. So that's normal gland and our tumour is all of this. So at low power, I can see it's very large and I can see it's creeping and pushing into the surrounding tissues. If we look more closely, this tumour has a predominantly solid architecture. And in places, there are small little cysts within these solid lobules, uh, so-called microcystic architecture. And they're the two dominant patterns. If we look at the cells in more detail, I can see kind of light zones and dark zones. So where the cells are lighter, they've got clear cytoplasm. And here, the cells have more purple granular cytoplasm, a little bit like those serous acini cells I just showed you. Overall, the nuclei are fairly uniform without prominent nuclear pleomorphism. Mitoses aren't that identifiable. So it generally looks to be a kind of low-grade intermediate type tumour, which is essentially what an acinic cell tends to be. They often occur with lymphoid tissue, which we can see here, so-called tumour-associated lymphoid proliferations. So this is an acinic cell carcinoma. It will be positive for things like CK7 and DOG1, and negative for myoepithelial markers such as S100, P63, and SMA. Um, this particular tumour can get confused with a secretory carcinoma, but they contain uh, mammoglobin expression and also harbour an ETV6 translocation. There is a new marker for acinic cell carcinomas called NR4A3, which is supposed to be highly specific for this tumour. So this was an acinic cell carcinoma. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, Path Made Easy. Thank you.